My name is Tolan. I work in the Need Company as senior developer of PostgreSQL. Maybe you know our company. We will engage to such projects as utilities GIS and Compro procurement. I worked for housing and utility GIS. I like sleeping and I like aut automatizing everything. Utility and housing GIS is a federal portal. You can find it almost in all the regions. Moscow, St. Petersburg and Sevastopol will join it soon. And now the system already has information about more than 120 million accounts. And as a user, you can see all the information that you are interested in on this portal. You can see everything that's going on in your house, in your district, and so on. And it's also possible to transfer utility payments for our portal. We have our own blog as well. And now I'm going to speak about some technical details regarding our project. Housing and Utility GIS is a server. It has 60 databases. We have standby and production, 120 million inputs of payment documents per day, 30 million payments a day, and meter readings a day. Besides, there are other integration loads. Regarding the development of our program, project, well, I can say that we used Java, and it was used in the Virgin control system. Liquibase helps us in it. It is based on Java as well. It helps to conduct migrations in a consistent way. So, our specialists can control the things that were added by the developers. So what problem did we have? When we launched, we were small. And when your volume is less than one terabyte, there are no problems at all. All migrations are very fast. No problems at all. Then we grew a bit, and our base was about 12 terabytes. There are bits. It was quite OK for us. And over the last three months, we have grown by 12 terabytes more. So we're at 24 terabytes now. And here we were faced with some problems. Migrations took a lot of time. It was difficult to plan the time of deploying, and we decided that it was necessary to solve these problems. That's why we decided to create multi-threading. How can it work? Well, we take one big table and divide it into several blocks, into several partitions. And for every partition, there is an independent process. It uses the data in this partition, and this partition is blocked for all other processes. Our first version was used on the basis of Perigisquel. It was quite fast, faster than common updates, but it was not convenient because DBA was responsible for multi-threading. And when we had deployed at night, DBA was to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and become multi-threading. But it was quick. And what are the main cases of applying multi-thread in our project? Well, first of all, it's about migration, not only updates, but mostly updates. Big tables, more than 100 million lines. These are updates with a complicated logic when we want the function related to filling in lines not to wait for the launch of the next function, but to be executed in 20 threads at the same time. If we speak about online migration, then multi-threading helps here as well. We can divide the table into small ranges, and all updates are conducted very fast. So we do not have to catch locks. All updates 
take several movements and the user is very glad. You cannot do it with big updates because the table log will last for several hours. We also use this approach to parallel liquid base. Liquid is single thread, but when we use multi-threading, we can expand its functionality. We also often use it to fill in new fields and to fill in complicated reports. Here we have Mikhail Bilayan, and he has presented a very interesting speech. You will see a link to Liquid Base. And actually, Mikhail is going to speak after me. So, here you can see some information about our problems. And we created 2.0 multi-threading. It was different from the first multi-threading because it became automatic. So here we united the existing solutions on Postgres with Liquid and with Go applications. So we had a hybrid. It can be launched automatically. We give, the, give it a task, the number of processes to be launched, and it works. And it also has specific features. I'm going to speak later about them. You will hear a case that explains that multi-threading is much quicker than normal updates. We have a server with 48 cores, 400 gig gigabytes of RAM and so on. You can see it on the slide. And we can conduct update with a common table, 500 million lines. It's a standard table. It will take 49 minutes. And after that, we try to use multi-threading. At first, we are to determine the range. We name our multi-threading. We say that there will be 25 threads, and we fill in the range of values. So we use entire function that divides all the table into 25 equal partitions. If you do not have a unique primary key or unique field that can be used for dividing the table, well, you know, the ranges should not be crossed. If it's not possible, then you can use CT1, for example. Here you can see the code. You can use it to do by CT1. It's even quicker, but CT1 is not constant. They can change, and that's why it's not always easy to work with them. But still, you can do it. After that, we call the application itself, we give it the parameters, the login and password, the database, and the time of execution is 7 minutes. And it took us 40 minutes to update. So, update operation is 7 times faster. If we also include the period of ranges for the need, then it is 3 times faster. Here we need to distinguish between multi-threading and the method of filling in that you use. For example, you can calculate everything in your head and you won't have to fill in anything. But multi-threading can really help you. It can speed up the process by the factor of seven. What other features can it have apart from automatic automatization and integration? Well, first of all, the results are still there. So the server may fail, but still half of update passed and half of update is left, and that's good. We save all the history of migrations, so we can analyze what multi-threading took us most time and what can we change there. We have a progress bar. It's the function that we really needed in Common SQL, so we can forecast when the update process will finish. All the bugs are locked, and there is an open interface in multi-threading. It looks like that. Well, it doesn't look nice now. I know it. It's possible to add dynamic features and delete the number of processes. 
So you can delete something if you want, and you can decrease the number of processes. If everything is okay and the system can cope with them, then you can add some processes. You can check the statuses. How many of them were processed? How many of them are to be processed? You can see the number of launch processes and see the expected time of one process execution. And you can forecast when multi-threading will finish. But of course, we cannot forecast the time at once. At first, we are to launch multi-threading. You can use PS PSQL here. So at first, we launch multi-threading. After that, we get time evaluation. But it is not accurate because for the first five minutes, our pages are loaded into the memory. And after that, the process speeds up. So we need to wait for five minutes to get an accurate evaluation. What can we do about it? Well, we like machine learning, and we would like to try analyzing the data before the launch, so we can use some regression models, and on the basis of them, we can create forecasts for this or that script. It will work if you have enough statistics for previous projects, and we do have it. Why did we use Go? Well, actually, we thought that it was fun. We use Python, Go, and C++. We thought that C++ is quite complicated, Python is quite slow, but Go will do fine here. And that's why we created this application. How did we integrate it with Liqui? For deploying, we use Bash shell when migration of Liqui is launched, and after that, the application migration is launched. So at first, we use three variables, user, password, and URL. After that, we launch Liqui and call an external program by execute command. After that, we transfer the parameters the name of multi-threading, it should be unique for it not to be launched accidentally. So if multi-threading was executed once, it will not be launched once again. In that case, you don't have to give it a unique name, but actually we give a unique name for every multi-threading. We give it the name from Jira task. And what are the cases of application? If we speak about code, on the first slide you can see that we added the number of threads into the service table, the number of processes, and the name of task. Here we have 10 of them. After that, we calculate the range. So in the output of the table, we get a lot of line updates. And here the primary filling in is finished. And on the second stage, we call the application itself. It takes this table. And here we had 10 processes, so 10 processes in the database were launched. Each of them got into this table, took the processes, and started execution. When the first one was finished, they moved on to the second one. Second case, solution of liquid single threading problem. We do not want to wait until the first vacuum for one table passes because it is not related to the vacuum for another table. If we have enough resources, then everything is fine. So here, we do not need any time for filling in the task to several moments. We have to insert several lines into the table. After that, we launch liquid and two vacuums are launched. So we can optimize the time of liquid execution. We can use it for creation of unrelated tables and indices and for parallel tasks. Third case, how can we use it online? 
For example, in a new version, we have a new field where to fill it in. Here it can be filled in in a standard way, but we can have different cases. We can have non-standard updates. And here multi-threading will be quite useful. So we divide the ranges into small pieces. So it is divided into 50,000 petitions. And for every petition, wires are executed very quickly. Maybe it takes one second or even less. And the user does not actually notice anything. And table is filled in with data in online mode. And then from batch, administrator or DBA can launch multi-threading. Well, it doesn't look user-friendly yet, but we plan to improve it. We plan to improve the interface and make the call of multi-threading possible through Postgres for this procedure so that it would be easy for everyone to work with it. So what are our conclusions? Multi-threading is very simple. You can divide the table into smaller parts and execute specific operations. We found a lot of options for applying multi-threading in our projects. We received good results in terms of migration speed. We also added the function of focusing time. We added interface. And we have dynamic change of the number of processes. It's quite simple to use with online migrations. And its advantage here is that in order to conduct multi-threading, sometimes we have to conduct full scan for the whole table and divide it into ranges, and it can be quite slow. So we do not have to use it everywhere, but in most, most cases it's quite useful. Speaking about our plans, well, we want the execution time to be available before we launch the process. We want to get another shell. And our web interface is not nice and we want it to look better. Here you can see the links that I mentioned before. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. Hello, my name is Andre. Thank you for your presentation. It was very interesting. I have several questions. Am I right that multi-threading is a separate service on Go that just waits for a signal, single to be launched, and after that, it divides, updates, and bases, so several threads into a base. Well, actually, it's a binary code. And at a specific moment, we can do it either ma manually or through Liquid. And, for example, if you have several servers, as I understand, you can target it at different bases. Yes. Well, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. The number of executed tasks may be changed. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Here we have worker and remove. Workers are responsible for adding or removing the number of processes depending on the current load. No, that's it. You just press the button and it happens automatically. Dynamically, no, it cannot be done dynamically. We need to conduct a survey of the server in terms of load. It's a good idea, I think, that we need to develop it in future, but we do not have it now. Thank you. And I also have a question. Is it you who monitors the load, or is it DBA? I am both DBA and developer. In our company, this positions occupied by one person, and how do you monitor the load? We use various means, standard activities, we have Zabbix that sends information about triggers to Telegram, we have Kibens, Stack 
for the analysis of logs, for the analysis that events that took place some time ago. We have talks, TED, Moon, and other things as well. So you have PG things, and you do not have anything special in the interface. Yes, normally they are used in Zebex, but we plan specific system that will monitor progress. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.